Ben Shapiro. His wife is a doctor. No, oh, is your wife a doctor? So the rumor is that she is. My wife's a doctor. Matt Walsh, the number one LGBT children's book author in the country. Johnny the Walrus is the number one bestseller on Amazon's LGBTQ plus book list. Jeremy Boring hates Harry's razors. Stop giving your money to woke corporations who don't think you deserve their product. Give it to me instead. Head over to IHateHarrys.com and pre-order your Founders Series razor and shaving cream set today. Michael Knowles wrote a best-selling blank book. You wrote the famously insightful book, <laughs> Reasons to Vote for Democrats. I mean, it was the best page turner I've ever that? read. I had been researching the topic my entire life. Candace Owens. I think she's friends with Cardi B. Joe Biden, who has been hiding in his basement for the entire year, made an appearance and came out because he was going to do an interview with Cardi B. Do we, do we have nothing better to offer? Andrew Claven is literate. Andrew is the author of many novels, including True Crime, which was made into a movie starring Clint Eastwood. Brett Cooper, the female version of Ben Shapiro. LMAO, Brett Cooper does look like Ben Shapiro. She's like some lab-made conservative clone of Ben that was genetically altered to be a female. Brett Shapiro would have been too obvious, so they went with Cooper. People ask me how often I get compared to Ben. It's every day. And now, Jordan Peterson, a Canadian. So I thought I would talk to you about the peculiar times that we seem to find ourselves in in Canada. At this point, the Daily Wire is like a real-life cinematic universe. But are these conservatives the heroes or the villains? I go to Facebook on a daily basis. The posts with the most engagement are from Dan Shapiro, or Ben Shapiro, Dan Bongino, Candace Owens. It is right-wing content. It dwarfs progressive content. It dwarfs mainstream media content, which is actually should be the part that scares us the most, that Ben Shapiro's Daily Wire has more followers and engagement, many times more than The New York Times or CNN. That is a problem. Let's take a look at each of these characters, and then we'll share our conclusion about them. Number one, Ben Shapiro. If you don't know who Ben Shapiro is, you probably live under a rock because, according to the Babylon Bee, Shapiro is an amateur podcaster, insurance salesman, Let's talk about life insurance. So, it's pretty obvious at this point everybody needs life insurance. and husband of a doctor. Shapiro is also a devout Orthodox Jew. The reason I wear a yarmulke is for two reasons. One, there's a religious reason. Going all the way back to the Talmud, Jews have worn yarmulkes. They've covered their heads out of submission to God and as a reminder that God is above us at all times. And the second reason is because, no, I'm not going anywhere, and anybody who has a problem with it can write off. So, of course, this means Shapiro is certainly not a Christian. But at the same time, a lot of Christians seem to really like Shapiro. We are so very excited about this gift that we have for this first episode. We're going to have one of our favorite people on. You know him. He really doesn't need much of an introduction uh, for our audience. His name is Ben Shapiro. What's going on here? Well, Shapiro ardently defends Christians, Christianity, and Christian ethics against a culture that hates these things. I mean, it doesn't really matter. I mean, to, to my central argument, whether you're an agnostic or an atheist, the bottom line is that without the belief that there is a purpose to the universe, without a belief that there is a purpose to your life, without a belief that you have the capacity to make individual choices, it's very difficult to build a civilization. By difficult, I mean impossible. Shapiro also had John MacArthur on his Sunday special. Well, we are here on the Sunday special with the great John MacArthur, who is the president of the Masters University, and we are going to get into an enormous amount of his philosophy and work. We're going to get into religion and free will and politics, so many good things. Shapiro is happy to publish articles that support pastors such as Vody Bakum and John MacArthur. And Shapiro has a history of fearlessly fighting for various causes that Christians likewise fight for. The left, however, thinks that states should be able to discriminate actively against religion. And really, they believe that the state should actively discriminate against religion. Today on the Ben Shapiro Show, we broadcast live from the March for Life and debunk the most common pro-choice arguments one by one. Today, the Biden administration finally put out their long-awaited OSHA rule from the Occupational Safety and Health Administration. They are promulgating a rule via an administrative agency that forces every company with over 100 employees to force their employees to either vaccinate or test or be fired. And we, we've already spent tens of thousands of dollars on our lawyers. We filed a lawsuit as of this morning. We are taking them to court. We'll fight this all the way to the Supreme Court if need be. Number two, Matt Walsh. 
Walsh is a beloved best-selling LGBT children's book author. Matt Walsh, if you are not familiar with, posted a video one week ago reading his book, Johnny the Walrus, to a bunch of little kids. Okay, so we're off to a rough start here. And the protagonist of the documentary, What is a Woman? What is a woman? Can you tell me that? <laughs> well, you're at the Women's March. You must have some idea. Please, if, if one person could tell me what a woman is. You are not here for women. We ask you to leave. Which critics on Rotten Tomatoes are raving about. What score did it get from the critics? Well, N.A., not applicable. There's no score. They just haven't reviewed it. None of them. There's one critic review. Walsh is also a devout Catholic. What are you doing to convert Ben Shapiro and uh, Andrew Clavin? Well, we, we, Michael and I both were constantly trying to you know, indoctrinate. And it's, but it's, it's tough with, uh, with, with Ben especially because he's, he's a tough guy he's to some, beat in a debate in general. Just start placing miraculous medals around his office. Yeah, we spr like, sprinkle them with holy water and that sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah. So, of course, like with Shapiro, Walsh certainly doesn't teach the biblical gospel of justification through faith alone. Go to our Catholic friends. Listen to this, Council of Trent, Session 6, Canon 9. If anyone says that by faith alone the sinner is justified, so as to mean that nothing else is required to cooperate in order to obtain the grace of justification, let him be anathema. Let him be anathema. They do not preach the same gospel. Walsh is deeply critical of the Reformation, which we see as one of the most important and necessary events in human history. The church is fractured into a million pieces. Christians disagree about almost everything. Even if you dislike the Catholic Church, it seems odd for any Christian to gleefully celebrate Reformation Day. You're celebrating disunity and brokenness, like throwing a divorce party. No matter what branch of Christian you are, the proper attitude towards the Reformation is one of solemnness and sadness. Even if you think it was necessary, it just makes no sense to celebrate the fact that there are 10,000 denominations. Walsh also defends evolution and the Earth being billions of years old. They're starting with Genesis and their interpretation of it and then trying to make the science fit. What's the more plausible explanation? That modern science is completely wrong or that young Earth creationists are misinterpreting it? So we have a lot of disagreements with Walsh. At the same time, Walsh is popular among Christians. Why? Well, like Shapiro, Walsh fearlessly fights for causes that Christians also fight for. Today on the Matt Walsh Show, Canada criminalized Christianity last week, and nobody seems to have noticed. I'm here today to talk about the battle over life, marriage, and gender. Argument number one, a woman has the right to choose. Answer, no, nobody has a universal right to choose. We all agree that some choices must be prohibited. The question is not if women should be able to choose generally, but if they should be able to choose to intentionally destroy innocent human life. Walsh's documentary, What is a Woman?, may be the best content The Daily Wire has produced so far. Is it transphobic to tell the truth? The interview's over. Let's turn off the cameras. Excuse me. Well, they're fair. I just wanted to know what is a woman. And you're not going to find out. Based on what I'm saying, would you ever want to move to America? <laughs> they say no. <laughs> Never. <laughs> no. <laughs> Walsh is an expert on hip-hop and rap culture. Okay, so it's time to uh, dip our toes back into the music scene and see what songs the kids are listening to today. The one that was brought to my attention by someone in the comment section, um, it's its a new joint. It's some real dope sh from my homie Polo G. I've been a big fan of Polo G for a long time. And most importantly, Walsh is uniquely good at video games, which allows him to reach a unique demographic. Well, maybe the civilian should get out of the freaking way. What are you doing running through live fire, you morons? If you like this video, a subscribe helps YouTube recommend these videos to more people. Number three, Jeremy Boring. Boring is co-founder of The Daily Wire, which means he often stands at a podium and says things that sound important. Thank you, you all still have jobs. <laughs> We've been doing these town halls now really since the beginning of the company. Boring recently announced a project that I might be interested in when it's released. And today, I'm proud to tell you that we will be launching Daily Wire Kids. Boring is a Protestant Christian. Here are some things we could find out about what Boring believes. And, though it pains me to invoke him on this awful platform, Jesus came to reconcile sinners to a righteous God. He needs help. He needs prayer. He needs peace. He needs the healing care of the actual divine Logos, who is himself a Jew, and who also calls himself love. 
We couldn't find any information about what church Boring attends or what denomination he belongs to. If you betray Boring, he'll start a razor company. Harry's Razors doesn't want your business. I do. They seem to hate you, and I, well, I can't say that I love you, but I don't mean you any specific harm. Number four, Michael Knowles. <laughs> Knowles is basically at the bottom of the hierarchy at the Daily Wire. And that was just too much for Harry's. Joel wants to know, Ben, why are you a Knowles hater? Can you explain your complex relationship? Oh yes, oh yes I can. Knowles earned this kind of disdain from Ben Shapiro by writing a best-selling blank book. Michael Knowles, who wrote a blank book with a quote from me on the cover and proceeded to sell 250,000 copies of that blank book. And then I, like the fool that I am, the generous, generous fool that I am, finding Michael Knowles an agent from which he earned another massive advance for a book filled with no words. Why do I hate Michael Knowles? Because the gods have smiled upon Michael Knowles for no reason I can discern. Like Walsh, Knowles is also a devout Catholic. Matt Walsh and I are Catholics, but we get this question all the time. People ask, who's the better Catholic at the Daily Wire? And like with Walsh, Knowles fearlessly fights for various issues that Christians also fight for. I'm always very grateful when left-wingers come on the show. Uh, not an easy thing to do. Most, most of them just refuse to do it. So I'm very pleased that our guest is Bronte Remzik, who is a, a third-year medical student, a social activist, uh, very much in support of legal abortion. Just when you think things cannot get any queerer, the Speaker of the House of Representatives appears on a drag queen TV show to declare that transvestitism is what America is all about. Number five, Candace Owens. Owens is arguably the most controversial figure of the group, which, considering the group, is saying a lot. Owens' critics say she's jumped on the Trump bandwagon just to get attention, and that her provocative comments threaten to normalize racism, sexism, and transphobia. Of course, the plantations of the 21st century are not physical, they are virtual. The owners of these plantations are once again, almost without exception, Democrats. Think about it. What today are certain areas of Chicago, Baltimore, Detroit, St. Louis, Atlanta, Milwaukee, and Philadelphia, all run for decades by Democrats, but virtual plantations? Many who live in these areas are largely, if not totally, dependent on their masters, the politicians, for their food, housing, and health care. In 2019, Owens was certainly not a Christian. They do not believe in religion. Like, there's just a thing. It's a trend. I've noticed that, you know, I'm mm -hmm. not religious. I'm not saying that, you know, there's something wrong with it. However, since then, Owens seems to have converted and is now an ardent defender of Protestant Christianity. Happy Sunday. Jesus as the King of Kings. There is no battle you are fighting alone. Jesus as King. This is certainly an encouraging development in Owens' spiritual life, although like with Boring. We couldn't find anything about what church Owens attends or what denomination she would affiliate with. Merry Christmas Eve. I hope everyone makes time today to attend a Christmas Eve service slash mass. Always a highlight of my year. Like the other hosts at the Daily Wire, Owens is popular among Christians for various reasons. Owens stands up to celebrities like Cardi B who promote sexual degradation. But you don't watch the Grammys and see two women half naked grinding their vaginas on each other. That's not what you see for the Grammys, right? She does this because she wants to get clicks, because she wants people to comment. And Owens fights for various causes that Christians also fight for. When women are out on the front lines demanding a right to end the life of children that they perceive to be inconvenient, um, we, we have to accept that we have been brainwashed into a cult. It became super surreal to hear them saying, it's not a life, it's not a life. And at that moment, I think what it really demonstrated was that in America, we're not debating abortion. We've never been debating abortion. We're talking about child sacrifice. The patriarchy didn't decide. Men didn't get together in a board meeting and say, okay, let's, let's, let's make the women have the children, right? God designed that. And when you have a child, let me tell you of all the things that I do, all of the important people that I meet, your biggest accomplishment is, is when your child smiles back at you. Family is the most important thing every single day. Number six, Andrew Claver. Clavin is a Jew turned Christian who wrote the book, The Great Good Thing, A Secular Jew Comes to Faith in Christ. Clavin has won awards for his writing and storytelling. Andrew is the author of many novels, inc including True Crime, which was made into a movie starring Clint Eastwood. It seems that Clavin is an Anglican, and though I'm sure we have some theological disagreements, 
I was encouraged to hear what Clavin said about trying to find a church to attend. So one of the most amazing things that has happened to me in my new home is I have found a church that I love. I have found a church that solves the problem. You have no idea. Well, maybe some of you do because you've been writing to me about it. How hard it is to find find a church. How hard is it to preach the gospel? It's written down. You can read it and then talk about what you read and what you think it means. That's your whole job. Like the others at the Daily Wire, Clavin fights for various causes that Christians support. So I'm really excited to get a chance to talk to Kirk Cameron. Everybody knows him from uh, Growing Pains back in the 80s, but also from that massive hit, Fireproof. He's invested a lot of time and energy and faith and family-focused films and television shows. He's got a new film coming out Monday, June 13th. It'll be in theaters June 13th and 14th. Uh, it's called Homeschool Awakening, a subject very dear to my heart. Number seven, Brett Cooper. Many consider Cooper to be the female version of Ben Shapiro. Every time. People ask me how often I get compared to Ben. It's every day. Tweets, DMs, all of it. It does not annoy me. Cooper is unique in that her primary focus is YouTube. Her channel is called The Comment Section with Brett Cooper, and it's kind of insane how quickly it's growing. What's Cooper's secret? Well, she covers everything viral. She has a unique and engaging personality, and The Daily Wire promotes her channel all the ingredients for YouTube success right there. As someone who creates content for YouTube myself, I find Cooper's content particularly interesting. I couldn't find anything about Cooper's religious beliefs, so I highly doubt she is a Christian. However, she seems to generally fight for similar conservative values as the other Daily Wire hosts. I personally believe that Hollywood and entertainment, film, and TV really dictates a lot of our cultural attitudes because we spend hours and hours on end, especially young people, taking in that content. And whether we, you know, are conscious of it or not, we are taking in their messages, absorbing their themes, learning subconsciously from the things that these TV shows and films are promoting. It is scary that there are people out there that think like that. Kid friendly is not amplifying youth voices. This is, it is making sure that an event is suitable and appropriate for children. You are an elementary school teacher. Your job is not to confuse children. It is to guide them on their learning adventure, which should not be about your gender identity crisis. Number eight, Jordan Peterson. It was recently announced that Peterson would be joining the new Daily Wire Plus. I mean, sure, Daily Wire Plus is going to have the Daily Wire, and sure, we're going to expand our relationship with PragerU, and sure, we're going to make more movies, and sure, we're going to make kids content. But I got one more plus. Here it is. Why is Peterson so popular? I was first introduced to Peterson when I watched this interview with a hostile host that went viral. But you're exercising your freedom of speech to certainly risk offending me, and that's fine. I think more power to you as far as I'm concerned. So you haven't sat there and I'm just trying, I'm just trying to work that out. I mean, ha, gotcha. You have got me. I was impressed by how calmly and effectively Peterson responded to the hostile questions he received. Peterson is primarily known for teaching men how to be men. This series is focused in on how men can be men. Why do you think there is such a crisis of masculinity in the first place, and why are there so many people out there who are angry at you for even talking to men? And like the other Daily Wire hosts, Peterson is fearless in standing up to cancel culture. I've essentially been banned from Twitter as a consequence. I say banned, although technically I have been suspended. But the suspension will not be lifted unless I delete the hateful tweet in question, and I would rather die than do that. Peterson has said some very interesting things about Christianity. You can debate about whether or not he actually lived and whether there's credible objective evidence for that, but it doesn't matter in some sense because this, well, it does, but there's a sense in which it doesn't matter because there's still a historical story. And so what you have in the figure of Christ is an actual person who actually lived plus a myth. And in some sense, Christ is the union of those two things. The problem is, is I probably believe that, but I don't okay. know. I don't, I'm amazed at my own belief and I don't understand it. Quick question, are you a Christian? I suppose the most straightforward answer to that is yes, although I think it's 
it's let's leave it at yes. Well, there's, I'm a bit dissatisfied with that because there are so many kinds of Christians, and well, I, I, I would never imagine that you were a very literal-minded Christian. Well, there are truths other than the literal that perhaps are more truthful than even literal truths. The Bible is true in a very strange way. It's true in that it provides the basis for truth itself. Without it, there couldn't even be the possibility of truth. But is Jordan Peterson really a Christian? Well, based on the things he has said, the answer is pretty clearly no. Peterson seems to believe a version of Christianity that is not historical, orthodox, biblical Christianity. Here's my humble opinion as to the spiritual state of Jordan Peterson. I believe that he's sitting under the terrifying weight of God's law and consequently feeling the burden of his own sins. Anyone who gives themselves to secular psychology will end up confused when it comes to the simplicity of the gospel. Whatever you think about Jordan Peterson, you can't deny that he says some very interesting, thought-provoking things. We have this sense in the world that human beings live in antagonism to nature and that we're actually a malevolent force. And that our social structures, which are clearly capable of the commission of atrocity, are fundamentally oppressive, patriarchal in their nature. And so then if you're a male in a society with that ethos, you're the motive force that drives you into the world to live is associated with rapaciousness and despoilation on the natural front. And then oppression and atrocity on the social front, it's like, well then, if you're the least bit conscientious, because this sort of accusation hurts conscientious young men the most, then the best you can do is, well, let's say castrate yourself. So how should Christians respond to the incredible growth and popularity of the Daily Wire? Well, I see the Daily Wire as a source of God's common grace towards our culture and society. While the Daily Wire is not explicitly Christian, there are many Christians with significant influence in the organization. Today, we're delighted to have Megan Bashan with us. And it seems clear that the Daily Wire is committed to fighting for principles like religious freedom and free speech, which Christians support. And no other organization fights for these things as effectively as the Daily Wire.